marks on the ground by the edge of the river. There were a few bloodstains here and there. That was all. I had a hunch I'd seen the last of June Lawson. Then I heard a faint noise behind me. Somebody was cocking a revolver. And I knew without turning around, the gun was pointing at my spine. That any second, it was going to go off. <laughs> No Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective. Michael Shane, reckless, red-headed Irishman, is back again in his old haunts in New Orleans. This is your director, Bill Russo, inviting you to listen to another transcribed episode, which we call The Case of the Popular Corpse. Thirty bucks for office rent. Come in. Seven sixty-five four three twenty lights. Leaves a balance or hmm, no balance. I beg your pardon. What? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Here, have a seat. Thank you. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, I was just balancing my books. It's a job for a tightrope walker. No, oh, what's on your mind, Mrs. Miss uh, Miss Clarissa Howard. Miss Howard. Uh, Mr. Shane. I want you to find my niece for me. June Lawson, I'm turning to you as a last resort. I haven't wanted anyone to know, so I've been making excuses to them all about about June's whereabouts. You see, it's a rather painful matter for me to discuss. What do you mean? Well, the plain fact is, Mr. Shane, my niece ran away from home a month ago. I see. Oh, I suppose it was my fault, really. I should have made more of an attempt to understand her, but... Well, there's quite a difference between 55 and 29. More than just the years. Yeah. And that's made being her guardian a little difficult sometimes. You, uh, you think June's here in New Orleans? I'm positive of it. You see, Mr. Shane, June and I live, uh, lived out in the country about 40 miles, near La Place. Oh, here's the address. Uh-huh. I still live there, but a month ago she, well, she just left. Shortly afterward, I got a note from her. She wrote that if any mail came for her, to forward it care of general delivery here. Her note was written on Donna Hotel stationery. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, here's a snapshot of her. Yeah. yeah. Very pretty girl, Miss Howard. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Oh, you don't have uh, any idea where she'd be. Anything might help me find her. Well, she was fond of music and, uh, and nightclubs. Oh, that's not much help. Yes, I know, but it's all I can offer, I'm afraid. She kept pretty much to herself, sort of strange and quiet. Even her hobby is a strange one. Oh, what is it? She collects epitaphs. Epitaphs? Is she kidding? Oh, no. No, she has quite a collection. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Well, I can't guarantee anything, Miss Howard, but I will try to locate June Lawson. No, oh, please do, Mr. Shane. That's another thing. I'm not an alarmist, Mr. Shane, but I'm a little worried about June. What do you mean? Well, I... I might as well tell you that she has some enemies. Oh? Yes, one in particular. A man named... Yeah? Uh, But that doesn't matter. I'm sure if we could just get her to come back home, she'll be safe and everything will be all right, and and I'll be a very happy woman. Look, I'll I'll do everything I can, Miss Howard, and I'll keep in touch with you. She thanked me and left. A plain-looking woman with a loneliness about her that made me feel sorry for her. I sat there a couple of minutes looking at the snapshot of June Lawson. Nice. Looking for someone like that couldn't be too unpleasant. And about then, there was another knock on the door, and in came a very rugged-looking boy. Shane? Yeah. My name is Keneally. So? So I have a job for you. I want you to find someone for me, a girl named June Lawson. Uh, June Lawson? Yeah, she's here in New Orleans. Yeah? I'll pay you a hundred bucks to find her. You must be pretty anxious to see her. I am. Why, Keneally? For a hundred bucks, you ask an awful lot of questions. Why do you want to find June Lawson? Let's just say I have something for her. That's what I thought. What is it, gold or lead? What? Skip it. Where are you staying, Mr. Keneally? That doesn't matter, does it? I could keep in touch with you here at your office. What's the matter? Don't you like visitors? Okay, Keneally, you keep in touch. Because I just might have something for you. A lot sooner than you think. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the popular corpse. Well, 
knowing my business, you get used to surprises. I must admit that hearing the same story from two different people within an hour was a little startling. Both Clarissa Howard and a character named Keneally wanted me to find June Lawson for them. Only I had a hunch about why Keneally wanted to find her. I took the stamps out of June that Clarissa had given to me, went over to the Donna Hotel where Clarissa thought June might have stayed for a while. Clerk's face lit up like a pinball machine as soon as I showed him June's picture. Yeah, yeah, she's really something, huh? You remember her? Remember? Sure, June Lawson. Could I forget something like that? Oh, uh, look, excuse me. You, you her uh, boyfriend or something? No. Oh, yeah, she was a real looker. Sort of strange, though. How do you mean? Always kept pretty much to herself. You know, didn't give a guy anything in the way of uh, encouragement. Yeah, I see. I, of course, I was only trying to be companionable. Mm-hmm. Little girl all alone in the big city. You know, yeah. I figured she'd be sort of yeah, lonely. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she couldn't see it that way. That's too bad. It's too bad. When did she check out? Check Day before yesterday. Uh, I, I think it was. Yeah, recently, huh? I don't suppose she left a forwarding address. No, I, I tried to get her to, you know, just a matter of record. Sure, sure. No soap. Okay, could... look, one more thing. Yeah? That bull-necked individual sitting over by the door reading a paper. You see him? Yeah. What about him? Is he a guest here? Don't place him. Why? No reason. He came in a couple of minutes after I did. I was just wondering. <laughs> Afraid I can't help you there. Okay, doesn't matter. Thanks. <laughs> I walked through the lobby and out the front door, and on the way, I took a good look at Bullneck. But he never looked up from his paper. I don't know, maybe it was my imagination. The next day, for lack of any other starting place, I went down to the post office and found a bench where I could watch the people going in and out. I'd remembered Clarissa telling me June was getting her mail care of general delivery. Well, I don't know if you've ever tried sitting on a bench all day. If not, don't. It's nothing but dull. And then finally in the late afternoon, I spotted Bullneck sitting across the street. I guess I stared at him for a couple of minutes before I realized I was supposed to be watching the general delivery window. I twisted my head around, and there she was, just melting into the crowd. The girl in the snapshot, June Lawson. Hey, hey, wait a minute, June. Oh, oh, oh. I beg your pardon, lady, I didn't see you. Well, don't you look where you're going. Look, I didn't mean to bump into what you. What are you trying to do, Grandpa? I said I was sorry, oh, lady. Oh, June, oh, June, oh, hey, wait a minute, June. Oh, hey, hey. Well, well, how do you like that? She's gone. Well, at least I'd seen June. I could tell Clarissa that her niece was alive and in New Orleans. So the next day, I drove out to Miss Howard's home in the country. It was a rambling old place. It just sort of leaned tiredly against a grove of trees. Even the air around the house smelled musty, and I was beginning to see why June had left home. There was a dehydrated-looking gardener wandering around in front of the house, prodding the ground here and there. I went over to him. Uh, Pardon me, mister. I'm talking to you. Hey, is this where Clarissa Howard lives? This is where. Well, do you you tell her I'm here, or do I knock, or what? Ordinarily, you'd not. Okay, I'll be ordinary. Won't do you any good. Huh? Ain't home. Oh. And look, Chatterbox, would you mind telling me where she is? Don't mind. Except you don't know. Oh, fine. Away for the day. City, probably. Well, okay. Oh, the way, uh, you knew her niece, June Lawson, didn't you? Sure did. She ever say anything to you about where she was going when she left? Never did. You're a big help. I was away on a vacation when June left. To come back, she was gone. Me and Doris had left, too. Guess neither of them like it yet. Saw a point with me, mister. What is, June leaving or the maid? Neither. My vacation, that's the saw point. Why? Oh, Miss Hart, she says to me before I went, she'd get somebody to look after things while I'm gone. So she turns around and hires about the stupidest man she could find. Yeah. I don't know who he was, and it's just as well. Now, take it easy. Why, the dumb, funny messed up all my work. No, hard easy. Oh, of it. Didn't do anything, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't even mow a lawn. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Even cultivated around my prize chameleon. Think of that. What do you now, mean? I'm a plain ordinary fool who knows better than to cultivate around chameleon. Of course. Why, right. just think 
Anybody get some easy, soup? Pop, easy. Why, if I ever get my now look, hands Pop, up... unwind, unwind. I haven't the time. I'll see you later. It makes me so doggone mad. I left the old fella hopping around, doing a little shadow boxing and turning the air blue. I went back to town and tried to figure out my next move. I was getting nowhere fast. One thing, sure, I had no ambition to camp at the general delivery window again. Then I remembered Clarissa told me June liked nightclubs and music. Well, that was about as slim a lead as you can have, but it was better than nothing. So I started making the rounds of the night spots that had vans. The leech was first on the list. I put a snapshot down on the bar in front of the bartender. What will it be, mister? This. Hey, that's nice. Uh, but not on the menu. I know. Ever seen it before? I'm afraid I haven't had the pleasure. Okay, thanks. Hey, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, what is it? When uh, you find her, bring her in, will you? I'd like to meet her. I kept going. I covered 15 spots by midnight. I was about ready to give up. Nobody recognized June's picture, but they all wanted to see the original. Then I tried spot number 16. My luck started to pick up. Yeah, let's have another look. Yeah. She's been in here before? Yeah, uh, she comes in here every now and then. Oh, thanks. Look, uh, have one on me, will you? I'm going to stick around a while, just in case. Make yourself at home, mister. Yeah, thanks for the drink. I waited about an hour, I guess. And then all of a sudden, she was standing in the doorway, June Lawson. Only she didn't come in, just took a look around, turned and went out again. I was on my feet in a hurry. When I got out on the sidewalk, she was just turning the corner. I started after her. Then I spotted Bullneck. He came at me fast. He had a present for me, a roll of pennies. Only his fist was closed around it, and before I could duck, he gave me the present right back on my left ear. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the popular corpse. It all started when a middle-aged lady named Clarissa Howard hired me to find her niece, June Lawson, who'd run away from their home in the country a month ago. Shortly after she left my office, a rugged-looking gent named Keneally walked in. He also wanted me to find June, and I was betting his reasons weren't nearly as pleasant as Clarissa's. Anyway, I started looking for June. It wasn't long before I realized I was being tailed by a character with a size 18 collar. I got a glimpse of June at the post office, lost her, and later that night saw her again at the door of a bar. When I got outside and started after her, my bull-necked shadow caught up with me, clipped me on the side of the head with a fistful of pennies, and I took a short nap. When I came out of it, the bartender was bending over me. My, my. Look at all the pennies. Yeah. You're not from heaven, brother, believe me. Some lump you got there. Yeah, thanks. I'll sell it to you cheap. I don't suppose you know what became of the boy who gave it to me. Sure. Huh? I heard the noise and got out here in time to see him going into that all-night drugstore. See it? Across the street from Donaway's? Yeah. Yeah, it's like he sort of want to keep an eye on you. He hasn't come out of there yet. Good, he's going to have company. Thanks. I crossed the street and started for the drugstore. When I got to the door, I saw Bullneck inside. He seemed pretty startled to see me. He backed toward the rear of the store, but he picked the wrong place. There was no way out. Get away from me, Shane. Uh-uh. We're going to have a little talk, Bullneck. I got nothing to say. We're going to change that. Who hired you to tell me? Go on, beat it. Let's have it. Who hired you? <laughs> Shane, if you know what's good for you... you... Look, I know what's not good for me. Getting hit by you a couple of minutes ago is one of the things. Now, open up before I get the answer out of you the hard way. I said beat it. I'm not telling you nothing. Okay, Buster, you're begging for it. Here it is without the pennies. You... <laughs> All right. Come on, champ. That was just the first round. All right. Play... Lay off, Shane, lay off. You feel more like talking now? Yeah, yeah. I'd who hired you to tell me. Go on, talk! Keneally. Keneally? What's his angle? I don't know. Come on, Bullneck, open up or we'll go round and round again. I'm giving it to you straight, I tell you. I don't know. Keneally hired me, that's all I know. Keneally hired me. Okay. I think maybe you better retire from active service, though. As of right now. Well, I was no nearer finding June than before. But squaring with Bullneck for the lump on my head made me feel a little better about things. 
I went back to my office, and I was pretty sure I'd seen the last of Bullneck and the boy who hired him, Keneally. But that just shows how wrong you can be. When I opened my office door, there was Keneally sitting behind my desk. Hello, Shane. You found June Lawson yet? What are you doing here, Keneally? Asking if you found June Lawson yet. Look, you know if I found her yet or not. That bullneck baboon of yours has been keeping you posted. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, of course not. Now, listen, Keneally, I know why you want to find June. I'm not going to be a party to it. You'll never find her through me. I've told Bullneck to lay off, and I'm telling you. Now, get out. All right, Shane. All right. But you haven't seen the last of me. That's a promise from me to you. But at the moment, I was more interested in bed than I was in Keneally's promises. So I went to my room and turned in. The next morning, I decided I'd better try again to see Clarissa so I could report to her. But she saved me the trouble. She was waiting for me at my office. Good morning, Mr. Shane. I, I understand you came out to the house yesterday. Yes. I'm sorry I missed you. Have you found out anything yet? Well, I can't tell you where June is yet. Oh, I see. She's alive. She is, you're sure? I got a couple of glimpses of her. Oh, Mr. Shane, that's wonderful. You, you don't know how happy I am to hear that. What a relief it is. You said June had an enemy. You, you started to name him, and then you stopped. Well, I thought it best not to say any more about it. I think we'd better. Is his name Keneally? Keneally? Is it? Yes, Mr. Shane. I think you'd better tell me why he's looking for her, Miss Howard. Yes, yes, I suppose I had. You see, Mr. Shane, I've acted in a sense as June's guardian for some time. The periodic sums of money in her inheritance have always been paid to me. I regulated her finances. But for the last year, I received no money from the estate at all up north. June told me the inheritance had all been paid. You uh, found out differently? Yes. June finally confessed that she'd been intercepting the money to pay Keneally. Blackmail? Yes. She wouldn't tell me why. Hmm. Well, cheer up, Miss Howard. We're not late yet. I must admit I'm fresh out of leads. Is there anything you forgot to tell me about her that, that might help? No. No, I can't think of hey, anything. Wait a minute. You did tell me something that might help. You said June's hobby was collecting epitaphs. Well, that's right. Well, that's the one thing I haven't tried. There's the cemeteries. Oh, but there are so many of them. I know, them. but it's worth a try, and I better get started. I'll keep you posted, Miss Howard. Who knows? Maybe we'll hit the jackpot with our last nickel. She left after that, and I made a list of the cemeteries that were noted for interesting epitaphs. And then I started off. I went from one to another with no luck. It was just a little before dark when I got to St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. Way across the place, a couple of hundred yards away, I saw a girl walking among the crypts. I started toward her, and I was still more than a hundred yards away from her when she turned her head and saw me. It was June. She didn't waste any time. She headed in the direction of the river and fast. Hey! Hey, June! Hey, wait a minute, June! What? Well, for crying out loud, she, she's gone. Here we go again. I, I kept going toward the river, because I knew she'd have to be around there somewhere. It was getting pretty dark now. Finally, I got to the bushes near the bank and parted them. And I stopped. Her hat was on the ground by the river's edge, and there were a few blood stains here and there, and that was all. I had a hunch I'd seen the last of June Lawson. And then I heard a faint noise behind me. Somebody was cocking a revolver. I knew without turning around that the gun was pointing at my spine, that any second it was going to go off. In a moment, we'll be back with a thrilling climax to tonight's Michael Shane adventure. June Lawson's hat in front of me on the riverbank and a gun behind me due to go off any second. I didn't even know who was holding the gun, but I didn't have to wait long to find out. Went a little too far, didn't you, Shane? Well, Keneally, can't say I'm very surprised. You're going to come with me, Shane, right now, and no tricks or you'll get one right in the back. The way June Lawson did? Yeah, if you want to put it that way. You know, ordinarily, there's nothing I'd like better than to accept your invitation. Right now, I haven't the time. Shane! I was lucky. The light was bad. The slug plowed into the dirt an inch from my neck. I kept on the bushes and kept moving fast. 
couple of times, I could see Kennelly walking along, outlined against the sky. And finally, I, I shook him. I went back into town. All of a sudden, I realized I was near the bar where I'd gotten a glimpse of June the night before, so I dropped in. I sat there for quite a while. I was almost ready to leave and drive out to break the news to Clarissa when I happened to look up. I blinked and looked again. No, I, I wasn't imagining things. Sitting there at the bar down near the far end was June Lawson. Well, this time I didn't lose out. I got to the side door a step before she did. Go oh, on, no. I'm leaving. Oh, good. We'll leave together. Come on. Come on outside. Here. Oh, I... Okay, this, this alley ought to do nicely. Now, come on. Let's have it. What's this all about? I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, you know what I'm talking about. Come on, give, Joan. Why this hard to catch routine you've been giving me the last couple of days? Also, why the fake murder set up on the riverbank? I... Oh, look, I'm getting out of this deal. I'm washing my hands of it. I haven't done anything, and I can't prove I have. And I'm sick of all this. What are you talking about? Look, mister, I'm not the girl you want. Oh, now don't give me that. I've got a picture of you. I've seen you twice in the last couple oh, of I'm days. Oh, I'm the girl you've been chasing, all right, but I'm not June Lawson. What? No. My name is Doris. I was the maid out there at June's and Miss Howard's place. Yeah, but what? Well, I'll tell you all I know, and that isn't much. I was hired to stay in town to, to let you see me, but not catch up to me. I wasn't expecting you to come back here tonight. I, I was supposed to make it look like I'd been murdered down there at the river. My boyfriend was hired, too, to follow you and report your progress. Your, your boyfriend? You mean Bull Neck? I still don't see what... If anyone asks us, we were supposed to say Keneally hired us. But Keneally really didn't hire either of you, huh? No. Believe me, mister, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah, I think you are, Doris. And the reason I thought she was was because I started remembering things all of a sudden. Things the withered little gardener had told me. That June must have left while he was away. And that somebody had been cultivating around his prized camellias. Yeah, about then it all began to make sense. I drove out to Clarissa's place. It was dark and quiet. Fumbled around till I found a shovel leaning against the lath house. Then I went over to the camellia bushes. I started to dig. Ground was soft and it wasn't from rain. I had a pretty strong hunch what I'd find. Two feet down and I stopped. It wasn't a pretty sight. Only I didn't have much time to brood about it. Good evening, Mr. Shane. Clarissa. Yes. Kindly do not move. I have a gun. So. You've discovered my dear departed niece's resting place. Very clever of you. You killed the real June Lawson a month ago. It will be a month tomorrow. Very convenient of you to have dug your own grave, Mr. Shane. Grave? Yes. You will rest in peace beside June there. Now, wait a minute. Put down that shovel. Put it down. Come on, now. Let's have the gun. Let's have it. That's better. Drop the gun, Shane. Keneally. Yeah, Keneally. Now, look. You won't get away this time, Shane. No, you, Clarissa. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Keneally. Look, if you'll let me get a word in You haven't time for many more words, Shane. You killed my cousin. That's why you're going to die, too. Your cousin? Yeah, June Lawson. June, but... A little while ago, down on the riverbank. I missed you then. I won't miss you now. Look, you got it all wrong. Clarissa hired me. Yes, I know Clarissa hired you to kill June. I know all about Clarissa. I tell you, I don't know what you've been stealing the money from June for two years, Clarissa, from the estate. They became suspicious. Came here to investigate. So that's your motive, Clarissa. June found out you were taking her dough, confronted you, and you answered all her questions permanently. Don't try to get out of it, Shane. Clarissa hired you to kill June. Now look, this is straight. I had nothing to do with it. Clarissa killed June. You came to New Orleans to investigate, and when she found out you were coming to see me, she got to me first to discredit you. She hired the maid to pose as June. No good. Well, can't you get it through your head that Clarissa killed June a month ago? Um, what are you talking about? Look. There's hole in the ground behind me. Look. He looked for quite a while. And Clarissa started to edge away, but not soon enough. Keneally turned on her, and his face was white, but his gun didn't waver. It was pointed right at her head. There was only one thing I could do, dive at him. It was a dead heat. Just as I hit him, the gun went off. <laughs> A slug hit the tree beside Clarissa, and by that time I had the gun turned toward the ground. I kept twisting, and suddenly his hand went limp. I had the gun. He just sort of sagged in. Shock, I guess. I knew then that I could persuade him to let the law take its course with Clarissa. Well, that's 
Just about that. Except the way I look at it, I'm still in danger. Just as much as ever. No, not from Bullneck. I haven't seen him since. And not Keneally. He's, well, he's pretty grateful I stopped him from killing Clarissa. No, it's that Gardner of Clarissa's I'm worried about. He's still looking for me on account of what I did to those prize camellias of his that night. This is your director, Bill Russo, again. Our story is based on characters created by Brett Halliday and was written by Bob Wright. The music is composed and conducted by John Duffy and Michael Shane is portrayed by Jeff Chandler. The New Adventures of Michael Shane is a Don W. Sharp production transcribed in Hollywood and distributed exclusively by the Broadcasters Guild. <laughs>